So I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to I mean, uh, Maureen online. Oh, good. I can't quite see that. Yeah. Yeah. You want to see motion? Switch that to you. So you can see better. You only need six points. I can tell you somebody's watching. Yeah, at least we can <laughs> go back to the welcoming part. So, welcome to the. Uh, uh, visitors and the staff and uh, the uh, DAC members online. And uh, today's uh, is uh, June 14th. Yes, it is. All day. It is. Yeah. Also, what's that's birthday? That's a good question. Uh, okay, good. So that's that. And I always like to remind us of um, our purpose. Our purpose as part of the DAC is to fulfill, uh, our purpose is to evaluate, uh, make policy level recommendations, and advise the district board of directors. So with that, we'll get underway to our first action item, and are we being recorded? Mm -hmm. Good, and we're being recorded. Hello, Missouri. Welcome. So the first action item is accepting the meeting summary. So you've all had a, cop, a chance to read the uh, read the agenda. I mean the uh, summary from last meeting. Are there any corrections? I have one just for accuracy, and I can't say I said it differently. But when it said I was announcing that there was going to be a annual meeting on June, it was on the seventh. It, it says the sixth year, but. Who knows what I really said back then, but might as well make it reflect. And other than that, any other good? So, hearing none, it is uh, accepted as tweet. So, our next item is to move right into uh, oh, I didn't mean to do that here. All right, good. So to approve the recommendations for the sub area two and three representatives and who I, I know, but. Uh, if you want to just give the summary of, of uh, sure. what, what happened and, and then put the two names forward or anybody else on the board can put forward the two names that are being recommended. And Okay. If somebody else want to speak or I'll just do it. Okay, good. So a week ago today, we met in this very building and um, in sub area two, uh, they had uh, a candidate who was present, Mark Elliott, was uh, selected by the sub area two representatives uh, to be their representative going forward. And uh, this will be then make somebody's last meeting with us. I'll be out there and I'll okay. be up here. Okay, <laughs> places, places everything. <laughs> and then in uh, sub area three, um, Jeanette Castro uh, was a candidate and she uh, was selected by the sub area three representatives. And so that's been forward to the, uh, or if this group approves yeah, that, that the, the, that's the, a new step. Yep, uh, yeah, that's great. That's good. Would look, yeah, would look just for a motion for you all to support that recommendation. And then we would bring that forward to the ABC process uh, at the county level. Excellent. So I would entertain a motion. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Just out of curiosity, because I wasn't able to attend the actual selection meeting. What was attendance like? Well, Roughly, I, I mean, I'm not expecting a head count, but was it we a had, bus or was it? More? No, we had somewhere in the mid 30s of people all together. I mm -hmm. don't know what the exact breakout was for each of the sub areas, but. Uh, <laughs> And we moved next door where it was air conditioned. Air conditioned, yeah. <laughs> so I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we um, recommend that we recommend the approval, approval, uh, approval recommendations for um, the new sub area two and three representatives. Mark Elliott for sub area two and Jeanette Castro for sub area Castro. D Castro for mm -hmm. sub area. Great. Uh, second. And Dave seconds. Thank you. So, uh, any further discussion? Uh, by a show of hands, uh, all those in favor, raise your hand. Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. And that makes. And uh, Maureen had her hand raised if you could see that. Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
zero. Thank you. Next item. Um, oh, let's see, discussion agenda. We're going, to, uh, we're going to suspend our Robert's Rules of Orders and turn the meeting over to our facilitator, Aaron Rock. Hello. I'm going to kick you all out unless you want me to wander behind you. <laughs> I'm glad that I can see Maureen on the screen this time. All right. All right. So where we were before, we came up with uh, our four goal areas. Uh, systems plan, governance transition, governance transition, it's easy for me to say, uh, relationships and funding. And I asked for some, some drafting in those areas. And I have had a chance to review all of what you've sent each other. I also sat down with Grover to uh, talk through uh, so that I could kind of wrap my head around uh, some of his concepts. And I'm gonna draw, uh, and, and from that meeting, there are kind of a couple of overlapping areas that I want to lay out and propose where we start. So um, they are, and I didn't grab anything, here it is. So they are uh, the governance transition and relationships um, ha seem to have a lot of interplay. And there's a couple of things about, I thought the government governance transition was done here, but we've got some input from Ryan and some input from Grover that I think we need to do a little uh, a little tweaking on. I don't, I don't like to get you off. Yeah. Off, but after looking at this, I was kind of confused because were we supposed to do goals or were we supposed to talk about how it was done? It seems like some things were, you know, this I thought it was supposed to be at a pretty high level and obviously Grover got it at a pretty low level. So, you know, I'm not sure what the ground rules were for that. Well, so when I give homework, sometimes I get back something I don't expect, right? And so we, I was looking for high level goals. And what Grover out, and that was why I asked to sit down with Grover to make sure I under, understood things. And I we've gotten to a place that I think I can outline what the high level goals are in there. Uh, and and I know that I I am I think I understand, and I know this group has discussed some of the reasons that Grover also outlined. Um, but I think that they those are I think that the governance transition and the relationships are a little bit intertwined here. And so I want to oh, yeah I want to name um, governance transition. Uh, well. How, how do I want to do this? Because I, I, I thought I had this planned out and, and I just got So the thing that I took away that I have permission to share from, from my meeting with Grover is that the that there were um is that the relationship the relationship proposals are really two goals. Relationship. And it is um, that local residents uh, represent their own communities. And that's governance, right? And that there is vibrant all way, all way communication between the community the Representatives, these representatives, the staff, and the board
right? And all of the arrows go all of the ways between those four, four things. That may, I'm not sure whether I'm confusing folks or, okay. Um, so who are the board and who are representatives? Yeah, so uh, hold on. Let, let, actually, let me. Do you mind if I ask or say something? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I, I think I think there might be one more piece here that you'll need, but I'm not sure. So I, I went through and wrote um, planning level goals for each of the four areas. Reason being is I saw some um, action items. I saw some very specific items that would be something that we would do under a goal. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went through and wrote high level goals saying that this is what we intend to do so that we could put an action item, which I think this is an action item. Okay. And I think the goal that, that I kind of threw together for relationships maybe isn't exactly perfect for that. And it okay. needs to be tweaked. Okay, so got it. To be tweaked. So then this can be an action item of how we do the goal. Yeah. <laughs> I got that. And that's where I, I, I was struggling a little bit is because I do think a lot of the ideas are actually we need to put those under a big picture goal so that we want to say our goal is to help facilitate our lose Yeah, I, I think that I, I think you're right about that. And I think some of the action items are also things that are really not DAC things, but things that that we want to happen. Yeah, and so that yeah. could be a, maybe a goal, a, a sub goal yeah. of this is what we'd like to do as a group. We would like to have four way communication. Yes. And and focus on creating that. Yes. And working with this group, this group, this group, and be creative. So I think there's, I think there's goals with sub Yes. And, and hold on to that for a second. Yeah. Hold on to that for a second, because there was one piece here that surprised me that we hadn't talked about that I want to I want to test with this group whether we need to go there. When when I talked to Grover about his vision of this working, what I realized and named back to him is that his vision actually has the DAC sunsetting itself. Because tell me, correct me if I'm wrong as I describe this, because there would be these local, and these are the, the neighborhood boards or communities, boards or forums that would represent the, the, their air, that would have their communication with their local area. And then there would be a red, the, the service district board of directors. There wouldn't be a role for a combined group because the work would be being done in the in the neighborhood and then go and that communication would go directly to, to the board. Well, not directly because of all of this way. The, that is, that's a model. I mean that's, that's, that's a model. That's a model. And it's one that we hadn't talked about here. And it came up as I was trying to really understand the important goals in the relationships. So <laughs> I wanted to put that out there as something that we haven't talked about to see whether we should talk about it. And that was what I wanted to stop you for, Ryan. Go ahead. So I love that. It is a model. And if we look at that, I know I'm going to say it wrong. IAP2 is mm -hmm. IAP3, I think. IAP3. I think it's IAP2, yeah. Probably participate. It's, it's a spectrum, mm -hmm. right? And to get from this end of the spectrum and go directly to this end takes a lot of uh, resources and a significant amount of resources in the community connection. And we don't have any of that yet. So mm -hmm. how do we make that the long-term 25-year goal mm -hmm. and then move towards that okay. and take those and take intentional steps um, to start to create that that framework, because if we don't have a framework, um, we're we're just it, it will be chaos, and it'll take hundreds and hundreds of hours of staff time and additional funding. That where are we going to find that? Okay. So I I love the idea of that, and that I think is the goal of of getting through a 
really true democracy. Um, we are a democratic republic, just a little history lesson on it, true democracy. So how do we shift to that? Mm -hmm. But we're still at this other end of the spectrum that we just started moving. Okay. As so for you, Ryan, this is an aspirational goal and it doesn't fit into our two to five year plan. I think, well, I think there's a step. Yeah. It does fit in, but it's a step to that. Okay. Got it. And, and with a horizon and like that, like you said, a horizon, which kind of scared me because I'm like, DAC has a horizon that's going to be done, but getting to a place down here. Now, most agencies aren't even at that fifth level. Metro's trying, mm -hmm. they've tried several times. There, a lot of agencies are on, we have it in six categories. A lot of agencies are on two, three, and are moving to four. Okay. So I think the goal of moving to, I'm saying six, that's the most, that model, right? Yeah. Six foot. Um, that's just my scale that I made up in my head so I can understand. <laughs> six is the, the purely um, completely empowering the community to make decisions and make funding decisions. One is really the government of the ones. And that middle three and four is where you go to, sorry for taking up time, um, is, is uh consulting for is getting community involved in uh different in a much more intentional way but six is that community does it all and informs how the process when does six and and each extreme in the extreme works very well i mean and it could be budget too so i i'm done okay go ahead sure uh and thanks for that uh some more data on the isp2 but my reading of the IASP2 is each project, or IASP2, yes, thank you. Um, it's that a focus is on each project to decide where does it fit on that spectrum. And you're mapping that onto an organization, which is not a project. Yeah. It is a structure for governance. And in the structure for governance, it is the assignment we had was how do we ensure two way communication? All way communication, etc. And so, right. oh, so so this isn't like this is not an IAP two. Okay, so you're not suggesting that the the these community neighborhood forums actually are then determining what the district does. No, they are the bot. Just does the CPO currently determine what the county does? No, good. But it collects the information from the people I in there, and okay. that group of people then, in this model, would have a representative who would attend or be in communication with that body, whatever okay. you want to call it, and they would then hear what their community has to say and be able to give them feedback on what they've been discussing and learning and some of the roadblocks they've had, etc. So it's a communication that keeps them informed, and then the representatives would be the in fact. Board of directors. Okay, after governance change. Yeah, this is all. Well, the whole thing was about after governance change. I thought. I, oh, and I was, I was thinking of relationships right here. Sorry. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 okay. Yeah, and that's where I said that they got entangled. And as much as I have been trying to tease them apart, there was a place I couldn't tease them apart here because in this model that Grover is proposing through through me once I once I got it straight in my head. Um, this is the re important relationship piece, all of these arrows going all over the places, and what that meant about governance was there wasn't really a place for the DAC in here, and that the community, the community voice would come through these neighborhood boards, which already exist at the Milwaukee Center and Milwaukee and the city of Milwaukee. And the city of Milwaukee. They would need to be created in the other sub areas, and then those would feed into the board. So that is that was my takeaway from my conversation with Grover about like what's what does this look like in the end? Post governance. Post governance change. Okay. Yeah. So, I guess so, the, the the only observation I had on that, or the end, one of the answers is whatever the newly elected board of directors is for that new mm -hmm. governance is going to be the ones that, that's going to determine how they want to have the rest of their representative structure. Right. Oh, okay. uh, actually, uh, I really oh, thank you for your actually, that up. So I what? just realized oh, yeah, sorry. Lisa had her something for <laughs> yeah, you. Sorry. Well, I just wanted to ask if 
assuming of where we don't have a DAC, assuming what you just said before Michael mm -hmm. started talking, um, I didn't understand who representatives are in this diet. So the representatives are these neighborhood boards okay. from each sub area. Okay. So community is a wider view of the community and representatives are the sub area board. Trying, I'm trying to get it in my head. So this okay. is so the a resident mm -hmm. who lives in a community mm -hmm. or two at least two of them have a board that the, engages their community, gets feedback from their community, mm -hmm. and then reports that directly to the new board who is the decision. I'm right about that, right? Mm -hmm. okay. They actually they have a dialogue and interaction with a co local community, mm -hmm. and that information is exchanged both ways with the board of director, who is a representative from their sub area. Okay. And that's where, and and the many things I have listed in here are the things that are out of balance. Because in the in the first place, Milwaukee is the only. So well, now, I'm gonna I'm gonna time you out because first I want to get people's questions answered. Okay, but I want to address what Michael just said. Okay, I want to get people's questions answered. Okay. First, okay. Oh, and I want to get I want to get the committee's questions answered first. Okay. Uh, My question was irrelevant to something else. I'll ask okay. Later. Yeah. Are there other questions? Yeah, David. Okay, I I guess one of these assumptions like what Corbin's making is that we're going to have. Uh, basically, the, the, we're going to have a new governance here, and and what happens if that doesn't happen? You know, what are our assumptions? Or what are our goals? Is to have a new governance, but that doesn't necessarily make, make it make it going to happen. And if it does, if it does, you know, eventually, I can't see it happening within, like somebody said, five years. That that probably is Russia concerning all it takes to do these things. So I guess that came from I uh, own that that so, came from me, not from Grover. So what? So, what, so I, I was going to follow. So what hap What happens if we don't have a new governance? You know. So what is? Do, do we? Do all these goals mean nothing then, or do we have to have an, a second set of goals? So if you know, what else we now yeah, well, in five years? So we haven't talked about what we, we're we've spent this time trying to get to what our goals are. And we haven't got we haven't talked about what happens if we don't achieve our goals. But I I do think I do think it is worth the exercise to create the goals that support each other and then have the conversation about and what happens if we don't achieve them. And and, and are we getting into how do we do that? I see it seems like Rover's gotten a whole lot into this is how we need to do it. And that seems like that's a, that's another that's the next level of detail. Which is why I sat down with him and said, "Okay, help help me help me come up to the top." And this is yeah. this is where where I landed with my understanding. I guess a question: Do you think this is working? Do you think like what we're doing? I've only been here for a year. Do you think what we're doing is working? Do you think we're successful in getting the community, the parks, and the representation they want? That that that's my question when I ask. So what, that's the question I ask myself, and my answer to that is no because park deficiency. We're still here arguing. The NCPRD is underfunded there in maintenance mode, they'll honestly admit. So for me, we must require a change, whether that is governance, which seems to be the most likely cause to push this forward. But I don't know. That's, I asked the question first. I, I, I guess yeah. I disagree with you. Mm. You know, you look at the survey that was done, 50% of the people said things are great. Mm. So it doesn't, to me, that doesn't, that's not an emergency. So I mean, I mean, we're we're trying to get things okay. pushing too far. I I agree that it was probably it's a good idea to have a new governance. But what happens if it doesn't? If we don't have a governance. And how long is it going to take? Ryan, uh, okay, thanks, Ryan. Robert. Well, I, if more people want to speak, I I just want to address something that Mike said before it goes away. I'll do it now. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Good. So uh, I love if those are following what's going on in Portland. Portland voted for a new form of governance. And out of that, including what they voted for, was that there would be a 13-member citizen-led um, committee that would actually, it's called the Independent District uh, Commission. And so those 13 people, are none of them are elected. They are all residents. And they are designing how the city of Portland is going to be divided into four working separate 
districts, and each of them will have three representatives on city council. I think we should do two for here, but the point is it's a direct connect from the community to the governance. And it was not decided by staff. It was not decided by the new board. It was decided, decided by the voters to empower that 13 person commission. And how did that, I think it might be yeah. helpful to understand how that got on the ballot. We're, we're, we're getting far afield in the goal yeah. side because they're, 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 I don't want to play point counterpoint uh, all night on, on okay. different points. Uh, ORS 266, which uh, is what would guide the park district, is very clear on size and structure. And, and we can get into all of that, but that's that's far afield of the goal of either supporting governance change or something like that. And, and because the, the details are, are really, there's a lot of details that, that have to go into it. And, and, and I think... Uh, uh, it's been, it's been said we're, we're kind of pre trying trying to predetermine things and and we just we're, we're treading on areas that I, again I, I don't want public information getting out that's not necessarily 100 percent correct okay, okay. Right. yeah <clears throat> so um this this is information that I think belongs in the partner app because this is a, a goal. This is how, like, like we say, we're really getting into weeds on how it's going to look if it even happens. That's why if we go back to the goals and say, okay, I yes, I think we should discuss governance. That could be a goal, and we need people to write it out so it makes sense. It can't be we're doing it this way. That's not a goal. That's an action. Okay. So let's bring it back to the planning level. Let's bring it back to the board level. It's like, what is our goal? Our goal is to um, to investigate, and I'm just make this up. We can write it later. I'm just wanting everybody to hear it. Um, the, the goal is to, under governance, is to support the transition of governance to special district through actions and advocacy, advocacy about the community-led district and board separate between the county. That says it right there. Okay, and then what we can do is if we want to get more detail on the goal, you can have a small findings on the goal or a small narrative on that. That includes X, Y, Z. It could include the structure, but that's the goal we're working towards. <clears throat> and that's why I'm struggling with this exercise because we're we're not staying at a high level. We're kind of doing this, and our board's been doing this. Yeah. We need to get back up here so that we can start to help influence decisions, get the connection between NCPRD and the working group, the, the people that are doing the work, and build those connections so that this board, this advisory committee, sorry, not board, has some kind of teeth in the future and can actually help advocate for things and do the change. If we don't do that, we're just sitting here yapping. And I'm not here to sit here and talk. So let's make some real goals. And if we need to get definitions of what goals are, let's look that up and figure that out. Okay. Um, and I, I'm not putting any of this other stuff down. Yeah. This is all good stuff. It's all action, actionable items. We're not there yet. Okay. Um, I am getting feedback from more than one of you. Like I, I had hoped that this was helpful because it was helpful in my brain. And what is helpful in my brain is not always helpful in other brains. And I'm getting verbal and nonverbal feedback that it is not landing as helpful as I wanted it to be. So absolutely uh, happy to change directions. Uh, Ryan, did you say you wrote some goals down? Yeah, you have them. Oh, uh, so you that was okay, yeah. And 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 they're just quick. Yeah. Um Yeah, I, 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 I thought that Ryan, you had said that you had written more down after. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I, that was just me misunderstanding. I them together. Some of them Yeah, me together. misunderstanding. Okay. That's help. Um, let me see. Where do I want to go here? I want to I wanna check. So last time, I thought we had a I thought we had unanimous consensus that changing to a 266 special district was a goal of this board. And David, you just made me doubt that. So I want to I want to check my understanding of that. Yeah. No, that, no, that wasn't what I want. What I said, I said that that that's our goal, and uh, 
but that may not happen. And you're saying all these, all these other, all the other goals need to fit in with that, but but I'm not sure if you say private communication that that seems to work with whatever whatever you go with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just it just I, you know my my fallback is well what happens if what happens between now and the time when we do get the new okay. Parents? So I I missed and I was like I said I was checking my understanding so I did misunderstand it wasn't that you were not in support of the 266 but you have this additional what if that doesn't happen question yeah and that's that's legitimate and I want to put that and I want to know what we want to happen before we before we talk about what if it doesn't I was just saying how complicated it is and how difficult it's going to be that it's not you know, it's not like well, what we decide is going to be our goal. It's going to happen by next next summer. Right. I, it's not going to work that way. That's why it's a two to five year plan. All right. Then let me. Brian, I'm, I'm looking at your. Uh, I'm reminding myself what what how you frame the this relationship one. So I, I think there's, yeah, and and that one was the rough one. I just kind of put it together. It's it's a, it's the goals are meant to set us up to create a focus. Mm -hmm. We don't have goals for our board. That's why we're doing this goal second session. I mean, we do in the in the charter. There's like. It's, we're supposed to do these things, but what are we actually focusing on, right? And that's why we call this yeah. goal setting. And goals are high level um, approaches to remind us. Now, there's a lot of details that can occur in there, but that's why I wrote these out the way that I did. It's they're they're positive. They uh, promote um, interaction. Mm -hmm. They promote change. Mm -hmm. um, that everything about a goal is to promote something that we want to accomplish in a certain way. And typically in planning comp level documents, it's positive change, it's positive approaches to change. And so that's why I put these together this way is to say, hey, here's, here's my deal. Like the funding piece, I did put encourage, advocate, and investigate development of the NCPRD Parks Foundation 501c3. Mm -hmm. That is a great thing that we could do. Now that's very specific. That's, an, that's actually an action item. Mm -hmm. Um, and I put that in there in my own So <clears throat> I think we keep diving into how we're doing it rather than what are we generally wanting to do. Yeah. And we can build those action items as we move along. We need a framework. Yeah. I want to. Are you reaching for your mic? <laughs> yeah. I was. And I'd love feedback on that approach. Yeah. Well, I guess my. So even, even though Ryan's are written at a more high level thing, they're still written as a do this, support, advocate, blah, blah, blah. They're not written, to me, a goal is we have a great comprehensive system plan that fills the needs of our of all parts of our district and all parts of our community. That's the goal. Mm -hmm not the supporting or getting us there. That's mm -hmm. the goal. The goal is a thing, not an action, I guess, in my mind. That's what I'm used to seeing when you talk about goals. And yes, um, I think I, for the ones I wrote, I've tr tried to write them in that affirmative language. And, yeah. and I've also been open to edits because these aren't my goals, right? Um, all right, you know what I want to do? I want to shake off this one and I want to shift directions and I want to focus on funding while my brain thinks about how to come back here. So we've got some funding goals submitted by Missouri and Brian. Um, Aaron, hold yeah. on, Chair, just uh, FYI, uh, Katie's joined us. Oh, hi, Katie. Hello. All right. So I'm on uh, the bottom of page two and the and the page three on the on the document that 
the full setting document uh, wanting to open up. We've got a proposal from Missouri and a proposal from Brian. What are your thoughts about what a funding goal might look like? Yes. Okay, well, I was, that's one of the things I was thinking about too. Uh, I, the goal the goal would be to have uh, something like that, have adequate funding to meet the, the, the system development plan and, and have some, and system operations, something like that, to have adequate. All right. Oh, yeah. But again, you use different words for that. But we have to start that. with some words and then. Yeah. <laughs> as, as, as opposed to, you know, we should do this or do that. Adequate funding to achieve system plan. System plans, yeah, and and have and have operations. Uh, operation, I'm sure the right word there. Well, the, the system plan outcomes really uh, to be able to put into place what comes out of the system plan is what I, I assume. I think you're saying. Well, I say yeah, there's two. There's the capital. Yeah. There's capital, and then there's the daily operations. Yeah. Or the annual operation. There you go. Input thoughts. <clears throat> I I don't have. A, I mean, I I think that's I mean, that's an adequate start. Uh, I mean, that's I, I think the language is broad, but it's affirmative and it's not providing. I mean, yeah, I. I that's what I would think a traditional goal would kind of give model after as well. So, all right. I mean, the more we pick it apart with our brains, the more we're going to be tempted to add the little, the little actionable nuances that everyone's probably thinking about when they think about what funding needs. But keeping it at this high level is the important part of all this, in my opinion. So, right. Um, I love that. I, no, I don't love that. I'm mean, saying that for everything. I like it. I like the approach. Um, the reason I structured the goals I that aren't necessarily considered goals is because we need to get this group to move forward so it has actual items. Um, this is great. Um, and if we can do that for all four, mm -hmm. then great. What's the next step? That don't answer that, please. Nobody, let's nobody. I want to talk about that right now. But um, that's the next question is what's the next step? Right. Okay, and I have a question for you yes. that is not to answer that. Yes. Do you imagine that adding that what's the next step is part of this discussion or is after goal setting? It's after. Yeah. Because we're, we're trying, we, we just need to set again a framework for us to function yeah. and move forward. Okay, yeah. Just get the target. Good. Yeah, just frame get the reference for point for yeah. going back to things. How rigid is a systems plan? So, does it allow for the ability for new ideas to funnel in, or is it structured to where what's in the systems plan is what's achievable? End of statement. It's it's reviewed on a regular basis, but I mean, it's meant to be a long range vision. So we have you know our short term stuff, our needs assessments of what's immediate, but it also provides strategic framework. With that said, once we ask the board to adopt the system plan, um, it, it, you know, there's usually, especially when it's related to capital improvement, uh, not necessarily the plan structure itself, but to capital improvement projects, things like that, there's usually reopeners every year, two years to three years for those new projects to be discussed, new ideas uh, specifically for that. Uh, I can't predetermine exactly how that'll come out, but that's what's built in uh, to the system plan that we're getting ready to engage with. So is it vague enough? So if, say someone wanted to donate land or we can convince an organization to give us land or someone happened to pass away and wants to grant this land and spare D, is it vague enough to where, or if the, the, we're offered a fair price for a piece of land, is it vague enough to take that Money out of money out of an account. No, the purchase. system system plan won't provide uh, operational governance direction. It'll say things like, uh, you know, high priority is to acquire more properties mm -hmm. uh, to develop into park properties. That's what the system plan will say. 
we need to develop a land acquisition and land management policy and procedure internally uh, that deals with what happens if somebody comes to us and, and again, wants to legacy grant us in a will or donate outright or sell us property. We don't have a, 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 a process that makes that easy for us to do right now, nor do we have a land bank uh, of funds that, that usually is kind of set aside for those kinds of things, uh, potentially. But that uh, what we hope is that the system plan really informs us that that's something that we need so that when when we do have these opportunities, we have the op we have the ability to, to you know take action or have the board take action, I should say. I don't want to get lost in the questioning, but to me, then why have we failed in previous systems plans or multi-year, tw twice a year, every third year, second year, whatever of you, in that we don't have, as you said, something that's, you know, I don't want to get caught in this. Yeah, well, the, pre the previous but, system plan that was, uh, that was done was 2014, 2015. It was built as a aspirational system plan more, uh, for the system plan to work, it required bond funding. The bond didn't wind up happening. So it, it, the, the plan was actually not even adopted in part because of that. Um, so, you know, going back to the 2007 last uh, plan that, that was actually adopted, you know, the, things get lost uh, when, when you've got a plan that, that that's that ancient and, and aged. That's why we're we're trying to hit that reset button and and do it to the to quite honestly a more modern uh, format and approach to the 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 whole system plan process. I can I can tell you that it's not going to be the as much of the standard whatever you know what you're used to seeing in a system plan with this uh, contract that we hope to move forward. With. So, um, but beyond that, you all will be involved in helping inform some of the outputs. Uh, the, that are ultimately part of the system plan through the engagement process. So there's a lot of faith in that statement. That's my <laughs> assumption. Uh, what do you mean a lot of faith? To not have the same errors of the past or to hope that we, the DAC, get the proper guidance or information from staff who is overworked, who is busy, or to harass the director in an intelligent, kindly harass you. I use it a, a nice way harass you know, to get that information <laughs> so that we can advocate for like the lack of appropriate acquisition of land in our current systems plan, or I forgot the proper terms. So things like that, that's place a lot of faith and a lot of you know catches or areas where we will need to be very cognizant and aware. So that's why that to me is great and has a lot of faith. Well, obviously you have to have some way to do to do that. That's a, that's a, but that's another thing. I think your system plan should be aspirational, though. and whether you can do it or not depends upon how you get funding, how you, how you get how you get these things. So I think that goes to Ryan's uh, having a parts foundation type of thing too, that raise money outside of it. No, sorry, is there more faith required for you in this one versus uh, the 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 one that just says we're gonna have? Is there more faith required for you in this one than any of and then the other ones? To me, relying upon the systems plan, which has had issues in the past for whatever reason, mm -hmm. I don't know, wasn't involved, and we shouldn't dwell on them, uh, versus saying we should seek direct increase of taxes. I know, dirty word again. I'll keep on saying it. it or, or is our one's clear. One says raising taxes, property taxes, mm -hmm. will help increase the funding of insecurity, mm -hmm. versus one saying the systems plan versus adequate system plan and you know, adequate funding for that via methods of, okay, and then the systems plan to have the ability to have land okay. acquisition, okay, okay, but there's no money there. Okay, yeah, that, that helped me. So if you were going to write it, yeah. what would it sound like? I think I did write something. No? You did. Yeah. You did. Um, you wrote and it's well, probably you, sunshine and lollipops. It's probably even worse than what that is. <laughs> yeah. I don't know so that. So you just get it, you just get it and see whether you would make any changes to it. I, I guess I'm confused about what 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 he's saying here. 
Uh, he doesn't, he, you know, doesn't he doesn't agree that we should have adequate funding? Is that so? What you're arguing about? You, you should say we, we don't have adequate funding. Well, well our goal is to have adequate funding. I've, I've asked him. I've asked him to, to. What I wrote: a vote is held to increase the tax rate, seeing that NCPRD requires additional funding. So that, to me, is without saying the word. Well, I guess I said it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. We need the. So you want to have a goal to increase tax? Oh, that that that's for the system plan and and, and so we we need to so, be in between. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because this is good. This is, find find our way there. And then we need to be in between um, adequate funding to achieve system plans outcome. We need an in between for this group. What what is it? Work at NCPRD. <laughs> seek out, seek out additional revenue sources. So oh, that, okay. That's... So Ryan, so let's let's like, let's look at Ryan. Ryan's Ryan did... room. Yeah. This group. We're not trying to. We need to wait. Hold on. The system plan is going to be informed by community outreach and give us our vision. Give us what the community wants and needs are. That's going to be put together by professionals. We are. We need to support that goal because that is the community based vision. Etc. 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 Support the project is our near-term goal. I know it's a, it has action words in it, but it's supporting and volunteering and being part of the team is how we move forward a systems plan, which will get us the other things. So it's we we need something a little bit more guidance for, for our group. I feel mm -hmm. um, I love y'all. There's one again. Um, but we need to we need a little bit more guidance and and so that we know what we need to be doing. Katie's hand is up. Oh, Katie. And then Lisa, I'm gonna ask you how you would write it. Katie. Um, I obviously came into this a little bit late and a little unclear on it just feels like things seem very vague and like we're trying to maybe write our own systems plan and like Brian's involved in the consultant selection for that I think that's important to know like a DIC representative is there like trying to speak to the interests of the community making sure that you know that is somebody who's been really vetted well like I think we have to have faith that that systems plan is going to be helpful and is going to really look at the needs of the community. And I feel like it doesn't make sense to be trying to write these goals when there's an expert coming in to assess these goals. Like why are we trying to write them without the information is what I'm wondering. It just doesn't feel like a great use of time. But that's my thought. Thank you, Katie. Lisa, how would you write it? Well, I mean, you know, like I said, I'm used to seeing goals that don't deal with verbs. Um, so I like this okay, except I would say adequate, you know, and I don't, I'm, adequate isn't a great word, um, but I guess adequate funding has been secured in order to achieve okay. them. So, I mean, I would make it more, or full, yeah, I mean, I, I do get Lucier's point about it being too hopeful. And I liked a lot about what Lucier wrote. To me, his was, um, I mean, it was long, but it was, there were pieces of it that did feel to me more like a goal. The goal is we've gotten through a vote. The goal is we've established a board. The goal is we've, We've gotten these things accomplished in the five years, right? Katie, I left you hanging there for a minute while I was thinking, and because I had promised to to call in Lisa, I want to transparently say I've been struggling with that a little bit with this whole project, right? And what I've how I've approached it is I've I've trusted that those of you who understand this work, because this is not my work. When I was brought in to set these goals, we, the systems plan uh, process of, of hiring was already in process. So I am I am trusting that there is a, a role for both of those things, and teasing those out has been one of the one of the walls we keep running into. And I'm pretty confident that if we keep trying to find our way around this maze, we'll we'll find a way without a wall. 
Um, and yeah, I keep running into that too. What what is the what is the systems plan that is the work of the people that we are hired that we you well I'm a, I'm a not a resident of the district, I'm a resident of Plaquemines, but not a resident of the district. What 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 is that work versus what is our goal work? And I I think there's a way for both of them, but there's some money overlap in that. Could we, could we just get some really, really basic targets, basic goals, and then work on the details after that? But to just streamline something like that, that's pretty streamlined, I think. But a couple more of those. So the, let me let me ask the question back uh, and find out whether it can be even more streamlined than that. You came last uh, last meeting. You decided there there are four goals. And I, I think you're all good with what the conceptual four goals is. Uh, let me test into like how much, because you could say your four goals are, I got them, systems plan, governance, transition, relationships, and funding. That's super streamlined. Yeah. Or we can go into, a detail plus initial actions. That's really up to you. So let me let me pull folks. Saying the four categories, does that feel complete to you? Or do you, do you need more than your goals are around systems plan, governance, transition, relationships, and funding? Well, I, I don't think it's, it's like as Ryan's talked before, we need some action items. Well, call them action items. Don't call them goals. Like, you know, okay. if you have one of these, uh, have a, a parks foundations, for instance, that that sounds like an action item. And and there's a number of things. Grover uh, had some action items in there, and okay. and thing, things you might you might want to you might want to do or that we should be doing. So that would that be useful to you to have <laughs> the goals that are just those four words and and some action items underneath them that you agree on. What, like like what? we've had, we've had the, we were talking about the system plan, and the system plan is being done by by somebody else, like you, like you mentioned. So I don't know our 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 action item that would be to participate in the in the plan, okay. the development of the plan as a as a regular public public a resident, I guess. Okay. Others. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether that should be system planning or systems planning. What are they called? <laughs> system plan, planning, planning, plan, development of the system plan. We only have one system, I think. Yeah. Lisa, I mean, I guess in terms of your question about do just the four words. Or topics do it. I guess if we assume that they all mean done well, <laughs> yeah. Um, the, I, and my inclination is one for that adjectives in front of them. Okay. Uh, excellent, comprehensive system plan. Okay. A robust, uh, you know, sufficient robust okay. funding. Okay. Um, you know, to put some adjectives in front of them, but I don't know that we need a lot more. Okay, so we've that. got we've got ideas that we can do just a word, one word. Lisa would do an adjective plus. There's also a verb plus. <laughs> what is useful to you as a group to guide your work? Oh, and then there's uh, action items under. Which is true for any of them. Any Which is true for any of them. Yeah. That's a menu of options. I kind of like the one word because, like you said, it's just an assumption that you can add to it. 
that it's well done, yeah. but that you probably don't have to state that in in word in written words. If it's two words. Oh yeah, some of them are two words. Yeah, how how is that a like? It's not really saying much. And maybe we don't need specifically goals for this group. I'm actually looking for, sorry, my email is all screwed up. I didn't get to see all the details that you all wrote. Mm -hmm. I just got topics. So mm -hmm. I didn't see all this other stuff. But for some reason, I don't have a packet in. It's somebody else's fault of mine. Um, so I would love to see some of this stuff because I've been going through my email this whole time saying, well, where is it? So that's my problem. Anyway, um, two words is a, a goal. Um, I, I just think we, we lose a lot in translation. And, and maybe and maybe we I keep going back to maybe we don't have goals as a group right now mm -hmm. as much as we have supportive actions. I don't know. I, I just think that if we go, no, I'm really struggling with this. So here's here's where we kind of, yeah, here's where things get squirrely. We've got these ideas that we think that we're aligned on, and we've got ideas that we're not aligned on. And we can spend a lot of time deciding on adjectives and nouns and verbs and exactly all the language. I'm here for that. Some, if that's valuable to you, uh, if it's valuable to you to talk to talk more conceptually about the goals and include the action items that are important to you, that can happen too. And where we're at now is that each one of you has kind of different needs about the goals, and I think we need to. I think we need to at this point, like, put some shape on what does it look like because I think it ideally looks different to each of you, and that's not <clears throat> going to be achievable. Well, I would say, I mean, if other people are comfortable with it being written as a verb, as a do this, I'm, I, 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 I can, it's not what I'm, you know, yeah. I yeah. Okay. So, so I get that. Lisa. I have a preference. This is the way I would write it, but it's not, but I, that's not a, that's not a stake in the ground. That, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe that's the next step. I think we just need something to focus on. Right. Yeah. And very specific thing to focus on. So we're not. Yeah, and that was that was my goal in asking you to do the drafting and then and then look at the drafting and and where we ended up is oh are we using adjectives or verbs and I can, I could make that decision for you but I think that would be irresponsible of me. Like I love, I love the first sentence and the first two sentences of what you say though. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I love that. I don't know if it helps, but sometimes you know there's a title of a book and then there's a sort of a tagline. Mm -hmm. okay. I guess I guess my, my question really is what I see this group doing is spending energy spinning on details without deciding whether the details are valuable. And so I'm challenging you to think about where do you wanna put your energy and your time at this point? And you know what, noticing that we're out of time for this conversation. Um, what so what do you wanna see? you know, for something next month. That... Yeah, I, so I want to I want to set this up well for next month. And I think I will do this. I will draft a couple of different I'll do a couple of different drafts that seem to represent what I have heard in different formats, and I'll I'll get that out to you to look at, and that will be a place 
for us to start. And in the meantime, I'm I want you to, to consider like we, we put a lot of effort into this and there's a place that you've got to get to that you have to decide what is worth your time it's going to be valuable in the future and what is this spinning because we don't know how to move forward does that make sense okay all right i'll draft something and i will have it to you by whenever jessica needs me to have it to <laughs> well, do you, do you all want it to want to have it earlier than just the packet for next month? I think as soon as possible. I don't know if it's possible. Extra yeah. pressure. Yeah. Okay. okay. If if we because they give a time for feedback, I guess is that, is that what you're right. thinking? Yeah. Instead of having to go all this fun around and. I think I can turn it around pretty quickly because I was not able to, I was supposed to attend a conference all next week and I'm not going to be able to attend. So I have nothing on my calendar. So I will do my best to get it to you by the end of next week. Oh. And then where will we get so you be on Thursday. That would be, that would be by Thursday because that's the end of my work week. Yes. And Monday's a holiday. And Monday's a holiday. Yes. Monday, Monday is <laughs> Juneteenth. <laughs> Uh, but I know my Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday have nothing on them right now because I was supposed to be able to start a doctor conference and I'm not going to be. All right. I will see you next month. Thank okay. you. Thank you. This one? Or that? Well, well. I can't read it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, just, I was going through the packets and my and you know. Okay, so that completes that portion of the agenda. <laughs> So it is now time to so DHC chair report at BOD meeting. So who put that on and what would you like to talk about? Uh, I believe you had, or somebody on the DAC had requested, uh, Joel, I believe, had requested that this be a discussion so that oh, you would be. Option, yeah, there was, please go ahead. Sorry. No, as I mentioned in the last meeting, Grover, uh, since you're giving the report on behalf of the DAC, I just want to make sure of an opportunity to provide feedback or input to you prior to those quarterly updates to the board of directors. Please send that away or yeah. I, or if, I don't know if you've even if we do have time, if you have any ideas of what you may be presenting, you could even give us a sneak peek so we could maybe bounce some ideas about what may be going through your head because we don't know exactly what you're thinking either. Um and I'll report whatever you guys want and then I will add some stuff in. A lot's happening between now and that meeting right. that will still add to that. Um, so I, I, I do know that as an example on the meetings that we had a week ago here, um, our sub area had a phenomenally productive meeting and is engaged in doing a lot of the kind of model. So I, I want to report on that. I also want to report that it was um, four years ago in this very room that in May that uh, we asked to have this conversion and then you were there and several of us were there for the year and a half that it took to iron out bylaws that actually are not very well fulfilled at this point in my opinion and I and this will also be my last presentation as chair so I I just want to kind of give a summary of what happened in those four years. Um, that's 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 a flavor that I'm going to include in it, not not item by item, but just <laughs> this is where we were four years ago, and time to see what's next. And the idea of governance, I have no idea how that fast that will go. But part of the reason I put this in here, there's some critical things left that need to be to be clarified, and who's going to do the clarifying? And so that's why I'm really enjoying the Portland model and so on and so forth. But do I have a list of things right now? No. I, anybody wants to give me input, I'll take it. No, that's great. I mean, like you said, uh, the only reason I wanted this maybe see on the agenda, at least on a quarterly basis prior to your reports, is because you're you're speaking on behalf of all of us. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that, you know, any personal stuff you've got is separated as your personal stuff and what, what is actually going on with the DAC and what we're as a group deciding is represented 
separately. So, yeah. No, and I totally agree with that. And I try to do my best. Oh, I'm, yeah, to absolutely. clarify when it's my opinion as opposed oh. to the group. Absolutely. So I'm happy to no, support any and all things that y'all want to provide. Send it on over and I'll integrate it in. Yeah, for a meeting that, by the way, we still don't know when it's going to be. Yeah, well, that was it's just the thing. <laughs> right, it was the 28th, and now it's to sometime in July. Yeah, so the yeah. meeting on the 28th has been uh, postponed and rescheduled to a, a date we have not set yet. So as soon as that date's set in July, we'll send that out and let the board, to let the DAC know. Yeah, terrific. And is that the meeting not only to discuss, um, you know, and is, that, is that also the meeting with like the stuff on the finance and the the money for Jennings Lodge and all of that? Those things that that Jessica sent us around. Because I thought there were two different meetings. There was like a mid month meeting and a twenty eighth meeting, or it was all on the twenty. Uh, well, you get notifications of our issues and updates as yeah. well. So, like just. Uh... What was that yesterday? Uh, we had issues in uh, the issues meeting with a couple of Jennings Lodge and IGA and a contract and, okay. and all that. That's separate from the NCPRD quarterly board of directors meeting, okay. which is a, a set aside here uh, specifically just to do the business of, of NCPRD versus okay. stuff that they're convening as the NCPRD board of directors, but in and amongst the rest of the, the county business. Okay. So that went ahead and happened yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So I'm looking at six looks like schedule. It's part of that's to be appearing at the business meeting tomorrow, I believe. Okay. Yeah, there, yeah, so, the, the idea. But that was what you're referring to. I saw that. Yeah. Thing. Right. And as an example, so and truly things are moving fast, and I appreciate how much has gone in a more productive method than it was four years ago, in my opinion. And and yet there's still a gap between what I envision. The function of community representation can, could be, should be, in advising whoever the governing board is, and that's that. That's all I'm focused on is that. And I appreciate Missouri's comment earlier. Yeah, uh, to even riff off of that, just continuing the uh, if in the transition to 266, let alone the voting, crafting the ballot measure, community voice there. If it passes, community, the community is driving how that transition takes place not the, the board who have, has now relinquished that responsibility, but as much community involvement as possible, let alone equal representation throughout the district of who is elected. So not, you know, as the current board, not to point fingers because you're here, you know, how it could be anyone from, everyone could be from, you know, one city or not a city, it doesn't. So uh, community involvement, just double underscore, if we move into a 266 from instantiation of crafting the, the ballot measure all the way to actual electing the members, I think it is essential to have community input there. Representation, the community is involved, yeah. Right. And then the third step would be then also deciding to change the taxes, which I very much appreciate. I already that said that the dirty word once. All right, so. <laughs> the presentation that spoke specifically <laughs> about you listen to what speak what specifically, and then you craft something to deliver it. Say, here's what you asked for. Here's what would take to make it work, and that's how money gets approved. Yes, sir. Um, and and I think it's getting community involvement and engagement, but it's also how are we creating permanent relationships to then create that that structure, and that's the that's the difficult piece. Is how do we as the DAC and um, NCPRD, there are, they have relationships, but how do we help create more relationships mm -hmm. with different groups, CBOs, and, and whatnot to, to expand that? So there is more to be involved. Right. Yeah. A lot of room for work there. That's, that's yeah, and, my and I think that's, <laughs> that, that's another like, that's good. Um, actually. Yeah. yeah. Really. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you for letting us know about it. Your thoughts. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. I, uh, I, I, uh, but, but on all fronts, that is what I'm committed to is, is community engagement and, and the sense that, that they actually feel, as opposed to, I won't talk about any current circumstances. Many people feel resigned that they can beat their head against the wall and try to get stuff and nothing happens. So they, why bother? That is unfortunately what happened in many of the CPO models, et cetera. And the good news is there's a 
great group working on reviving that. So without hope, that's why I love when you talk about or what you say, wishful or faith. Well, yeah, with faith, hope, without that, we're sunk. So it, it runs deep and, and I'm yep. still signing Two up ways. for that. Okay, good. Anything else on the uh, chair report? Please do send me anything that you would like and I will uh, either have a comment, conversation with you if I have some uncertainty about it or I'll be happy to report it. Change of status updates, Milwaukee Bay. Uh, I've got printing on my thing. Uh, Concord, SDC methodologies, et cetera. Um, sure. Uh, we don't have anything to report on Milwaukee Bay Park or SDC methodology at this point. Uh, City of Milwaukee, we don't have any resolution on that. So things are, are still in stasis. I do have uh, some uh, news to report on Concord uh, as far as just kind of a status update. Uh, we are starting to get now to the more details of uh, construction plans. Uh, something that the, the DAC is going to need to consider is after September, uh, this building is not going to be uh, usable for probably at least a few months, uh, but realistically, probably most of the project, we're starting to shift all of our operations to uh, and, and programs and stuff to be held at other locations, but uh, their their Hall Road plan and their need to be able to access the library uh, from the front really kind of makes it so that we're not going to be able to use the front of the building. The only access we're going to have is uh, in the small alleyway behind. So staff will be able to come in and out kind of even more almost on a schedule limited basis. So we don't uh, have that, but just be aware of that. But things are moving forward on on that. Uh, I don't have time yet or a specific date, but we are planning on uh, taking uh, information to the board. So the, the, board, uh, the board of county commissioners has seen the uh, guaranteed maximum price for the two libraries. Uh, for us to start moving forward and keep things on the same process, we're going to be bringing information of a similar nature, but a little different because it, it, it's done a, a, a bit differently, showing, you know, the expected costs, uh, you know, estimates uh, from the, the various parts of the project, which we've got the facility, we've got the playground, and then we've got kind of the, the rest of the, the park and parking lot and civil work. Uh, with uh, So we'll be bringing that to the board to to, you know, we're going to at some point need to amend the contract uh, like we do with the with the library, like we just did with the library for the projects to be able to move forward. But again, anticipation is uh, project work will be starting in the, I think they're saying this first or second week in September um, for, and, and most of that uh, is just going to be a lot of earth moving. They're going to try, and it's all going to be weather dependent, obviously, but they want to try and get as much dug out for the library foundation and some of that hillside that's going to get leveled out, some fill down here and the retention pond down here, get that stuff done hopefully uh, this fall, start on uh, building work here, uh, interior stuff uh, in like no end of November through December, January. Uh, and then as spring comes, really hit the rest of the, the outside stuff as soon as they can. Um, so mm -hmm. we're very excited. Uh, we, we still have some funding sources that we're waiting to, to hear back on uh, Metro local share and the local government grant program, uh, you know, are, are what we're trying to fund the, the bulk of the playground uh, and the shelter and restroom uh, component of the project. We, we just, we don't have that firm. So that's going to be a squishy number until that's firmed up. But the rest of the numbers are coming in. Uh, overall estimate is it's going to be about $14 million uh, investment on NCPRD's part. Um, but, and that includes a couple of uh, money that's already been spent on design and, and engineering work as well. But altogether, uh, it's about 13 to 14 million. Uh, I do want to, we, we haven't really talked many in detail, although a lot of you have been involved. One of the things that, that we were able to add back into the project is the spray ground. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not an adult anymore. I was able to add that back in as a main part of the the project. So we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, and then we're also going to be as long as again things work out money wise and costs don't all of a sudden escalate. You know, for some reason unforeseen, uh, we were or the original plan was we were only going to do HVAC for the front half of the building. 
we are going to put the money in to do the full HVAC for the full building. I just, I really don't want a year and a half from now, somebody asking, you spent $14 million to half air condition our building. Uh, and so, you know, it's an extra, I think it's about seven or $800,000 to do the rest of the building, but it's going to be a lot more expensive in the long run if we try and go back in and retrofit. And it was that same argument with the spray ground as well, um, you know, to, to have to go back in and, and put it in. Uh, realistically, it was, it was because of the fact that we're putting the restroom and shelter in and we're running plumbing already along that way. Uh, the cost was really the installation of the, the nozzles themselves and the control. And it, it, it came in at just less than a few hundred thousand dollars. So to me, it was an easy choice to add that back in. So uh, we're very excited with the progress of the, you know, there's some critical steps that still need to get figured out. We're still working through the, the construction IGA for the land sale. Uh, after that, uh, it's anticipated that we'll start with the actual land sale documents and, and the, the operational IGA that'll kind of li line out what the library does and what we do and who shares what costs of where and how and all of that. So that's still a lot of work that, that's going to get done that we're anticipating getting done uh, after we get the construction IGAs, that gives the project ability to move forward and have access to the building and all of that, then we'll, we'll, we're going to be starting. We've already started work on the operational IGA, but to start really in earnest to sit down and figure that some of that stuff out. So we and, and I think the final completion date schedule is October 2024. So so your admin staff and everything going nomadic again? Uh, yeah, we're, 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 we don't have a full plan yet, but we anticipate we're going to be using some of the aquatic park uh, office space, um, possibly some of the other properties that we've got, maybe Springfield House. Uh, for, for anything that we need to do, meetings where we have to gather, this place just is not going to is not going to work once they once they start breaking ground. So. Are you using DAC homes as well? Yeah, uh, uh, Grover specifically said he wanted to have. Uh, uh, didn't you say Tai Chi and cheerleading? I think that's what you. Uh, you at the same time. One yeah. Front and <laughs> uh, so that that's on Concord um, uh, NCPRD funding. Just as a note, uh, our budget is uh, due to be adopted next uh, Thursday, the twenty second. Um, and so that's uh, on the calendar. I believe it's at ten o'clock. Uh, and the system plan, we've, we've talked quite a bit about uh, the system plan tonight, but I am pleased to tell you, and, and thank you, Ryan, for, for assisting. Uh, we, we do have a, an intent to award uh, out there for design workshop. Um, uh, we you know have a few hoops that we still need to jump through before things are finalized. There's some negotiation, but uh, Ryan, do you want to do you want to say a couple of things uh, since you were you know very directly involved in uh, yeah, right. this process? It was a great process. There were um, we followed all the rules, which is a lot, um, <laughs> and we had two very close folks. Yeah, with, within a couple of weeks. Like on ballpark, I'm super excited that we get to work with them. They bring a, a, a really unique approach and a very thoughtful and they really thought about it so and they use iap2 and they use iap2 yes as one of their frameworks yeah that they, yeah so i, I think they're going to be great this is for, for the systems system plan okay. yeah yeah, and yeah. It's a small firm that has um uh it's is it a women-owned business yes it's well they have a, a yes. wbe and a covid certified wbe within their team. so it really it really met all the criteria right here you want, you want to tell us what some of the abbreviations mean? So, uh, <laughs> so the business COVID. I always get, I always get this out. COVID uh, certified is for minority-owned, women-owned businesses, and it just it provides help. Uh, there's there's a, a certification process that that you you can become a COVID uh, cer certified. It's just a it's an additional mark that that they've jumped through additional um, either. Uh, uh, diversity, inclusion, equity uh, types of, uh, I don't want to call them hoops, but but they've met certain criteria to be certified as a COVID business. So yeah, one of the sub, one of the subcontractors with, with this group is uh, COVID certified, I do believe. And for our agency, we, we, um, we hire COVID certified in certain instances first, and then go out. It's, it's a way to level the playing field. Yeah. I don't know the permit action. Yeah, but I'm not. You can't do that anymore. 
<laughs> once, once we begin, the, once we begin the process after contracts and after there's some, you know, uh, gathering, uh, you know, of uh, things together. But once things are kicked off officially, it's it's estimated to be a 13 month process. So we anticipate hopefully July or August kickoff. So you can do the math right about the same time that the ribbon cutting will be happening for the new library and uh, grounds and community center. We should be uh, about to the point of, of asking for adoption for the system plan. So we're very excited for engaging with the group. I think they're gonna be fantastic. Uh, you'll, you'll all be very much directly in, uh, involved in it in, in their plan. Uh, right at the right at front loaded uh, kind of at the beginning of, of uh, the needs assessment and and uh, that process so uh, more to follow on that um other than that that's uh, all we had on changes or status updates thanks do we always have a representative of the DAC on the systems plan system plan committee to review uh well no I mean we we haven't done a system plan since 2015 <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. The, yeah I mean so this was based on the interest that was expressed when we were putting together the the uh, evaluation team. It just made sense to to include you all. It, there's you know there's no prohibition against it uh, to to do that. And so uh, we we wind up wound up with a great volunteer and somebody that you know has experience directly in uh, in that. And and so I think that worked out even better for us. But. Um, no, it, I, I don't. I can't speak to what they've done before if they had that before. But it's something that we want to do as often as we can, as as is appropriate. That was my follow up. Do yeah. we make it a thing to where that's from the DAC or maybe even someone from the community who's an active member or has? We we, we just need to be careful on. I mean, uh, slowing down it, on on the bigger things. I would say absolutely, yeah. I mean, on on big big stuff like systems plan or capital improvement, you know, plans things like that. But we do uh, scored evaluations on any large, you know, purchases even uh, that that have to happen. Uh, I, I don't know that it would be worthwhile even for for the group to to have a DAC representative on everything that that we evaluate through procurement. But on the big stuff, absolutely. When when there's going to be community engagement level and in, involved and and buy in needed, I mean, quite honestly, that's what we're hoping is. There's some legitimacy to our selection because Ryan says so, not just Mike saying so. Um, and so, you know, I, I would say let's look at it on a case by case basis. Okay, like maybe contractor selection, like for or not contractor selection. The group I'm going to mangle words. The group who's doing the preliminary work on the Jennings Lodge uh, property. At, well, that, that's already that, that's there? already done. Already but done. but yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, we we could certainly talk about that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. Again, it, it, it's, it's time, yeah, it's yeah. time intensive. Just you know, Ryan knows how much time we had to set aside, and and if they're you know, but let's let's talk about it on an individual basis because I I do think there's a place in in a lot of that. Thanks. Yeah. So Ryan said there were two that were close, but how many total did you have? Four. Four. Yeah. Excellent. Any more questions, comments about that list of things? Next item, public comment. Moi. Okay. <laughs> Scott Schreiber. Right here. Introduce yourself and your approximate resident. Oh. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Kathy Schreiber, uh, going on my third year now, advocating for the fir trees and the health over at Alma Myra Park. Um, I want to thank you guys, all the staff with NCRPD and the DAC for all of your hard work and all you do for the county and the parks community. Um, so at the November 9th, 2022 meeting, there was a discussion regarding the integrated pest management plan, IPM. Michael Bjork, let me make sure I got that for now. Bork. Bork. No okay. J. No J. You're not Swedish? Bork. Yeah. <laughs> so graciously asked for clarification, and his quote was wondering in general, what are we doing wrong? We're following the IPM. Uh, the Harvard Landscape article was brought up as being a great example, but simply a test plot. And quoting here again, um, he stated he wouldn't be interested in doing anything more than a test plot, which stated in the positive is we would be willing to do a test plot. 
<laughs> my ears just went boing. Um, so in subsequent meetings, we were presented with the IPM. Thank you for that. It's very, uh, it's, it's great. Um, an independent arborist report that included a full assessment and recommendations, the requirements to address the arborist recommendations for further assessment on unusual basal swelling and red ring rot on a couple of the trees. A request was made for the timeline on fulfilling the recommendation rather than putting the dates of the meetings. I'm just kind of summarizing some of the things that have happened since that November meeting. Uh, 275 native plants were planted, including ferns, fringe cup, and trillium. Two trees were taken down. A portion of one was left as a habitat tree. Several volunteers showed up at the NCPRD sponsored mulching party in March. I spread some wood chips that were on the site in two spots next to a couple trees. At another meeting, I presented the Washington State University study showing conclusive data that wood chip mulch is better than glyphosate for weed control in native habitat restoration projects. More mulch has shown up on site as being applied to the new plantings. Um, I've seen the employees over there third time today, actually, uh, trimming with a weed eater areas of grass and weeds that grew not in the mulched areas. And I took pictures, but because they're not in color, they're just they're just really not effective. But you, you can send them anyhow, to, got them. I can send them to, to Jessica. And yeah. We can forward um, so we'd like to set up a test plot. Uh, we've got the equipment know-how to quantify several data points, and these would be used as baseline to then compare and document improvements of water infiltration, soil building, soil structure building, pest and disease pressure, weed pressure, nutrient uptake that leads to plant health and resilience, and drum roll, carbon sequestration. So these are all, uh, there's all research that backs up all of these items. Um, and I just think of like, imagine if NCPRD could be Clackamas County's carbon hero, because this is something that's documentable. <laughs> so we have 13 interesting parties in the neighborhood, and I've yet to organize any kind of Friends of Alma Mater or a park group, but it's time to make it official. I need to know what the next steps are and who I need. Thank you for your time and all your hard work. Contact us after. We'll put up on the agenda. That's your three minutes. Oh, perfect. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Anyone else uh, wish to speak? Okay, do we have anybody online? Good. Hello. Please introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, Hello. I didn't know somebody else was going to. Introduce me. Hi, my name is Jan Carruthers, and uh, I live in Jennings Lodge. And I had three different things, comments to make, and I appreciate the work that you're all doing on goal setting. Uh, it does occur to me at one point that you were discussing the idea of just using your headline topics as goals. And it occurs to me that there's a great deal of difference in people's minds when you start thinking about, for example, excellent governance or excellent relationships or any one of the uh, sufficient funding, it does seem that there needs to be some more detail in terms of what one really means by those things. For example, excellent could fit one person's definition or excellent could be um, equitable taxpayer wide, community wide. I mean, there are there are ways people will determine what what you mean by excellent. So anyway, I just thought about that. And um, I also wanted to ask a question and the about the um, in the SID, I mean the systems development plan SD, <laughs> systems development, uh, is process uh, property acquisition or asset acquisition a part of that system development plan? Because we talk about that, but it is, I understand that we don't actually, NCPRD doesn't actually have an asset development plan or acquisition plan, is that right? Would you like me to respond? Please yeah. uh, as, as I think we covered this uh, a little bit earlier. 
No, we don't. We don't have currently an asset uh, acquisition uh, or just uh, you know asset uh, distribution, distribution, any kind of plan along those lines. If somebody contacts us, the system plan is going to inform us that there's a desire for that and provide a framework even for. Uh, it's going to inform us areas that we should concentrate uh, on looking for land to develop and acquire, okay. uh, but it's not going to develop the plan for us it, itself. We may wind up having to, you know, consult with that again, or again, not reinvent the wheel and find uh, other park districts in the area that have an asset development plan and, and modify it to our needs. Uh, but it isn't something that we have. I've been loathe to, to develop any of those things in light of the system plan helping to inform what should be included in that. I see. So it's still even even with the systems plan, we still wouldn't have one. We would just know if we should have one. Well, concurrent development. I mean, the, one doesn't have to initially and in, in, in essentially follow the other. Uh, we know that it needs to be developed. Um, we don't want to put a lot of development into it until we understand the framework of what people are wanting. They may tell us concentrate on nothing but trails and, and connectors uh, and not you know, big land. Then, you know, maybe okay. there's, there's a lot of variations. We want to make okay. as informed work and planning as we possibly can. Okay. And then the third one would be, the third point would be uh, a question about the Concord project. And that is originally in the conversation uh, earlier about the property and who owned what. Uh, as I understood it, the parking would be, the development for that would be shared between the library and NCPRD uh, as two tax paying districts. But as I'm understanding, beginning to hear that the possibility is with the district, parks district owning the vast majority of the property and only just a, sh a small amount around the actual library building itself, then that would become a fee uh, funding resource that the library district would then be responsible for ongoing fees of some kind or the possibility that they could be charged for ongoing use of that parking. Is that accurate or not accurate? I'm not quite sure what you're what you're asking. Uh, so, in the in the construction, there, there's two different processes. There's construction, and then there's management and operations after it's built. So, in the construction of the project, uh, the library and NCPRD are sharing costs to develop the parking lot and the green space and the pathways and trails and all of that. Um, so that's that's already worked into the existing budgets for constructing that. Uh, after that's done and the buildings are operated, yes, there has to be some uh, arrangement because at least the way that the land sale uh, may proceed in one way, uh, we need to have laid out who is paying for lights on the pathways and lights around the facilities and in the parking lot, uh, who pays for maintenance and snow removal and uh, sweeping of, of the parking lot, drop off areas. Um, you know, shared use of, of this facility, is that done uh, with no fee or is, is a fee needing to be imposed? Because again, there's costs involved in us having our facility open when, you know, it wouldn't necessarily need to. There's a lot of those details. That's the operational IGA that I was talking about that we haven't started developing yet other than the basic framework of, of how it works. But yes, there, there potentially needs to be uh, compensation for shared costs associated with the operation of the facility overall. What those just, are, we just don't know yet. Sorry, uh, I just was curious because it's the same taxpayers paying, then it seems like they're paying twice for operating a piece of property that uh, they're paying partly through the library and partly through the parks. Uh, it, it just seems like they might be paying twice or we might be paying twice. Just that was what I wanted to ask you about. Thank you very much. I know you are responsible at the DAC for advising the district board 
on policy. And I just would request that your goals allow you to be able to advise on policy. Thank you very much for all you're doing. Thank you, Ms. Carruthers. Uh, that gives me a follow-up question to that though. So you, Michael, you just mentioned there's an operational IGA that you talked about. Back to Missouri's question, that's like, at what point do we, using the DAC, to advise the board of directors on such a thing is where can someone or somebody, there's a whole body that's want to do, be involved in the design of that structure? Because I really appreciate what you just said. The same taxpayers that built this building, not in, I wasn't alive when this building was built, but the point is it was paid for by taxpayer dollars to build this building. Same with the Jennings Lodge School, same with, so taxpayers pay for almost everything in our current structure. So if we can have it set up so that the benefit of two entities like the library and NCPRD working together is a cost savings to the taxpayers as opposed to an added burden one way or the other because you pay it here or you pay it there. <laughs> so designing that operational IGA, who has input on it before it's a done deal, here it is. Well, right right now, again, we're not talking about a lot of things that are opinion. We're saying, okay, there's going to be a cost right. to manage uh, and and say pay the electric bills on all of the public lighting and the parking lot and the patterns. Okay, so uh, what needs to be figured out is how that split. Right. I don't know that that is something that should be informed by popular opinion uh, because there are there are specific costs. Uh, same thing, landscaping costs. Mm -hmm. Who's going to pay for flower beds around the library uh, versus the rest? That needs to be figured out. Yeah. I don't know that there's a, an early role in the public helping to determine that. Uh, I've not ever seen that uh, in, in negotiations for uh, uh, um, an agreement between two government entities. That's usually <clears throat> government entity to government entity negotiated at, staff, at the direction of staff and legal usually. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's not going to be a time for the public to review that IGA as, as part of the, the business, the regular business. Um, but I, I would have concerns as to it turning into a popularity contest versus a decision uh, based on what needs to, to be in the best interest of a separate operation. The, the county, everybody says it's the same tax, but the county is uh, uh, collecting a tax. We collect a tax. It's not the same tax. And then the library collects the tax. Exactly, right. And it so, exactly. So I, I can't spend, my, my job is to run the district. <laughs> and to manage any agreements that we've got, including a, a governmental, uh, intergovernmental agreement with the library or with the county, through with, however that's uh, determined. Mm -hmm. But getting a, a lot of having a community focus group on determining, you know, how much percentage should be split between electrical costs between the library and that, that's just to me that's not efficient. Right. But I, I want to actually, I didn't want to say a community focus group. Actually, the purpose of the Board of uh, District Advisory Committee, specifically by design, is to make advice, uh, to advise, to make policy recommendations around costs, maintenance, all those things that's laid out in the bylaws approved by the Board of Directors. So I'm not just saying some and, random group of and, and my And my charter is to be the resident subject matter expert to bring you all recommendations to make uh, policy, you know, policy level decisions to the board. That's perfect. That's that's what I see as my role is. I, I'm an expert in in doing these things uh, and making those recommendations. Now, if 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 you don't like the recommendation that that ultimately we as staff made, yeah. that can be handled through the public process. Yeah, but it isn't a matter of not liking it. It's not knowing what it is. That that's that that's the distinction. Because I don't say I don't like it or not, but not knowing is not knowing. But not knowing on what, uh, on, on how to, how to, yeah, there's, there's, a, you just spoke of. there's a difference between not knowing issues and, and a no, lot no, of, no, no, no information flows out to this is what and why it's based on before it's time to make a recommendation. We need to have that information before we can make a recommendation. 
not here's our conclusion. And, and again, I, 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 I will have to get clarification. My understanding is IGAs are government to government and, and board to board. Okay, good. So that's like, so, I'm glad you brought that up because that's an important point to me. This district has 80% of the people live in a non IGA able group. And then there is 20% that lives in an IGA group that has special agreements that they have. Group. What, Pardon me? What, what, what are you doing? in Milwaukee has an IGA with NCBRD. Okay. Okay, that's a government to government. Right. But the other 80% of the people who live in NCBRD do not have the same opportunities, rights, uh, obligations to be delivered in the, in the relationship because it's not a government agency. So we are a government entity and the county is a government entity. We are a tax paying uh, entity or a tax collecting entity. Okay. So when we're talking about an IGA, it, that's why well, an I IGA is allowed. I appreciate the term. I'm just talking about what the end result is. I, I guess I'm just not clear on what you're asking me then, okay. Grover. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm, right. really, I'm really confused too because I think this is a real waste of time. Thank you, I, Dave. I think we've gotten overboard on this. Thank you, Dave. I don't think it's our job to try to figure out what policy they're going to do when they're going to, who, how, how often the guy can take a shit when he, when he's doing the Dave, cleanup on the lot. Dave, please, this is a public conversation. Yes, Commissioner Savage. Yeah, I just feel compelled and just to, to jump in here. So Mike's, Mike's responsibility is Mike's responsibility. I think he outlined it well. Um, on the library side, that's Dan Johnson. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the staff are working together to make this a fair uh, agreement and the board we have not yet relinquished anything in Siri. <laughs> so the board has taken an active role in, you know, because agreements are often executive session kind of uh, arrangements, and we're going to make sure that it's fair. And there are cost, mm -hmm. not capital costs, but are cost to operate and maintain the no facilities. Problem. And we're sharing this, so we're making sure that it's properly apportioned so that no one's no, no one's ox is being more that it's fair. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do that as best, and we're going to learn from this. We're not going to get it right the first time. We're going to learn as we go and as property being developed yeah. and maintained, and they'll do, and we'll be making adjustments. So, yeah, make a um, living document. But, but just to let you know, gives you all confidence, uh, we are actively making sure that all the agreements are going to be laid out, like every other agreement is being looked at in the, in the entire district and also in the county side as it relates to the library. So, those are the two people, Mike, Mike Borg. Dan Johnson, and then they're coming to the to the staff, and the, their their staff, and then the county commission wearing those hats. So just trust that it will be well, and it'll be posted a week before it's approved, so you'll have an opportunity to view it. And again, I don't expect we're going to get it perfect the first time; we never do, and we'll have to make it. We'll, have, we'll make adjustments afterwards. So there will be things we forget about, or yeah, yeah but there won't be any double charges. It'll actually be a cost savings because it'll be split. That was the whole idea of this concept yeah. of sharing the property and everything. So that is the that's the spirit of the agreement. That's good, yeah. and and thank you for that explanation. The the reality though is I'm still trying to have us be able to as a DAC to have it be functional. It needs to have information to be able to do policy level recommendations to advise, et cetera. And if we don't have that information until a week prior, which means it's already been decided and it's either going to object to it or not, it's it's different. I, I just wanted to point out that the DAC's purpose and goals are not being fulfilled based on a structure where it happens in government, IGAs, and you get to find out just before before it gets voted on. Yes? Can I, can I clarify? It sounds like, um, Commissioner Savas, is the plan then for this IGA information to be included on our DAC packets in the future for actual projects? Like, is this information we're going to get from now on so that we could have an actual agenda item for these things in the future? Because um, I appreciate what you're saying, Grover, but I feel like it seems very theoretical, and I'm wondering if there's a plan going forward for tangible projects. Yeah, well, I appreciate the question. Um, I would say that there might be some operational agreements in the future, like I mentioned before, where we're looking at the adjustments, how it works, that where we have the time and the opportunity to be more, if you want to call it public or have review by the DAC. Right now, we're trying to make sure we get the groundbreaking in place on time, making sure this project launches on time. So time is of the essence, right? So, um, but at this point in time, one thing I do want to say, Katie, if I got to your question, um, I, one thing this might help, and that is that while I understand the DAC's 
desire, maybe the take on, maybe not everything, but a lot. Um, I guess we need, you all need to discern amongst yourselves what it is you want to focus on, more of the high level stuff in the park versus some of the more technical stuff that's going to be, you know, I mean, if you're full time, you know, and you've got the ability to spend all that time, then great, but you meet once a month and there's, you meet for an hour and a half, two hours, and there's not a lot you can do in that period of time. So I, I would just decide what you all want to do in the future, what areas of advisory roles, capacities you want to do as a VAC. I, I just suggest you sort that out. I'm happy to take any other questions. Thank you for that. It feels to me like this might be a good agenda item to discuss like how many of these requests are there. Like, I don't know how many IGA um, policies come through regularly. So I, I feel like that might be good to discuss in a future meeting. Yeah, we would need to go Well, I just, I mean, I feel like Grover's read of policy is awfully broad and that, um, you know, IGAs are operate, I mean, especially sometimes IGAs are policy documents, but what they're talking about here sound pretty clearly to me to be operational documents about day to day operations. And that, uh, to me, that's a different thing than policy. I would not have expected that to be this group's. Well, I'd be happy to read you from our bylaws. Real, I mean, can truly, I, can, I, I would really like as a DAC member to get more information about this if we're going to really talk about it, because I, I feel like there's some people who have a lot of information about this, but, you know, we're past our meeting time and this just feels like we're not really ready to have a good conversation about it. So I'll just leave it with that the uh, bylaws are posted on the NCPRD website, and you're all welcome to read them. Uh, it's all the stuff that I'm referring to is on the first page, and it is what our purpose and goals are. And it does include all the things that have been mentioned specifically around maintenance and operations and et cetera. They're all listed specifically. So I, I, I don't know that I'm making it up. I just know what this group put together, what it was approved. And then the reality plays out not quite that way. So that's why. Anyway, so I'm done with all of that. Any any other questions about? Uh, so we, we were on public comment and we went through. Okay. So you went into your reports. Yeah. So DAP Thank member you. reports. Anybody have anything they want to say? Yes, Anna. On a festive note, where the trolley trail crosses Oak Road Boulevard. On July 15th, in sub area two, there will be the Oak Grove Festival, which has happened for several years in a row. Um, our new DAC member, um, Mark Elliott, is pretty much sharing how that uh, is developing. He's in charge of it, and so is the historic downtown Oak Grove uh, organization, which has partnered with NCPRD. There will be live music, there'll be over 100 vendors, there'll be a um, colorful kids area where Mike Work will be doing a hundred balloon animals. Just a hundred. Oh, no. I was going to say <laughs> just a hundred. Yeah, that, that's that's a, a low <laughs> number. Yeah. Hour. Yeah. I think we did about two hundred fifty. Balloon last animals year. until he can't operate his fingers anymore. <laughs> and uh, and there'll be other kids activities there too. And uh, so it, it's a lovely thing. It's community led and it's festive and everybody's invited and it's from 11 to 4 on July 15th. Thank you. Uh, I don't know who was Joel. first. Joel, oh, All right, Joel you're up. Uh, just wanted to report a couple of uh, things from the Milwaukee Community Center. Uh, first of all, uh, I mentioned that we are working on a mural for the side of the building. I believe the I can't remember the directionally the side, but uh, the update we kind of received at the last meeting was that the cost of that would be split between the Milwaukee Community Center Foundation and the city of Milwaukee, uh, it being their building. Uh, so we're kind of excited with that. We're, I believe we have an artist selected, but we don't have any renderings or anything of the, the mural itself, but looking forward to that. Also presented at our last board meeting though, uh, something I wasn't aware of, wanted to share. Uh, this is a countywide program for uh, summer energy assistance, kind of modeled around the winter energy assistance program. Uh, and, and sort of also model around there's a firewood program for the Milwaukee Community Center for people to rely on that as a heating source. Uh, this is focused on summer energy uh, assistance, people that need money to run air conditioners or perhaps uh, just electricity. 
Um, that can, they're taking applications at the Milwaukee Community Center uh, through September for this. Uh, and I would urge everyone to share that with your, your members uh, in your area, or people you deal with. Um, also, the Milwaukee Community Center is ongoing taking uh, fan donations as well. Uh, they distribute, uh, you know, like oscillating fans, box fans, whatever sort of fans you're supposed to be trying to get rid of. But uh, that's a great uh, place to drop those off. I'll make sure they get them to people in need. So I wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think folks know that Milwaukee is building three neighborhood parks out next year, basically using ARPA funds. Um, those parks have largely been designed, but the last piece of them is playground design. And um, there are two opportunities for playground experts, meaning kids, to come uh, help us finalize our playground design. Um, so this coming Saturday is Milwaukee's Juneteenth celebration. It goes from 11 to 3 p.m. at Water Tower Park. And there will be a bunch of activities there, but one of the activities station, one of the places will be uh, uh, and some activities for kids around playground design. And uh, there are free t-shirts for kids who come and participate in that. And then um, the following Saturday, the 24th, is our Pride uh, event in Scott Park, which is the small part next to the Letting Library. And again, that one's from 10 to noon. And there will be, again, um, an opportunity for kids to help us finalize our, our, our playground design. So we hope people will come out for those events. I also want to say I will not be here next month. And I was planning to send um, Councillor Coaster Body in my place. Is that OK? Can I send a substitute? Yeah. I, I don't think there's any prohibition to it. OK, great. Um, he said he was available to come, so he was going to come in my place, and hopefully we will have our second Milwaukee representative by next time, too. Oh, so Ben is no longer? Oh, Ben, yeah, Ben is no longer on our Parks and Recreation Board, mm -hmm. and he, did you guys not get a formal, oh, I'm no. sorry, uh-oh, well, that was probably, that's probably on me, yeah, no, Ben is no longer with our Parks and Recreation Board, so we will be looking for another member of that board to step up and be our second representative. Anyone else? Katie's yeah. got her hand up. Yeah, I can oh, speak to some area three a little bit. Um, when we met um, to discuss our election and elected our new representative, we did discuss um, some parks matters, specifically Pfeiffer Park. Um, there have been some concerns with people in the area about traffic things, and we did discuss that the right committee would be the traffic committee to relay that information to probably rather than parks. Um, but there was a lot of community concern, so trying to make sure people know where that information should probably go to. Um, we also did discuss, you know, the potential of how great it would be to have more trails, but, you know, people in our area are a lot of commuters, and we would also really like to recruit some people um, who are maybe retired uh, <laughs> to help support our efforts with the Justice Park project and to help support the Friends of Justice Park. Um, the folks at the meeting were all um, kind of you know, we would love for more community involvement, but realistically, those of us that are attending are working parents, and it is a lot more difficult um, for our area. So that's what we discussed. Yes, I have some. The sub area one on the 24th, Saturday from 1 to 3, is the pollination celebration that NCPRD is putting on. And I've got my butterfly wings out, but I have to iron them. But um, yeah, I think it could be good. It's uh, very kid oriented, I think. Where? At Stringfield Park. Stringfield Park. Great, thanks. Yes. I'll make it brief. When we spoke last week, uh, in our sub area group, uh, there was some voicing of concern about the Jennings Lodge property. I know the IGA has been released. I'll, I'll talk to Heather after the meeting, but this is pertaining in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the not just the land itself, but the building and it being completely involved into parts of NCPRD. So I will be penning a letter to the Oregon City School District, their board, uh, to see what their thoughts and opinions are, might get no response. If you're interested in being on that letter or voicing any sort of additions to that letter, please 
email. Chat, chat with us, sir. We got, we got some you. information. Okay, I'll chat with them first, but then if you want, send the message to DAC then and I'll find it. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Great, done. Okay, anyone else? Okay, that completes the, uh, get on the right agenda here. The member reports, uh, district monthly report. Uh, for interest of time, I don't have anything to add other than on if it took my thunder. I was going to talk about the uh, the pollination celebration. Uh, I'm going to be at the Pride event at uh, Scott Park on the 24th and then uh, pop over to the pollination event. So uh, I probably won't be wearing my butterfly wings. So sorry. Uh, just in case we were in a class. Uh, <laughs> uh, but otherwise, I mean, we what about what about the music and the part of the kids activities that start the 26th? You put a flyer in, but that, that sounds pretty cool. So it, it, we're, we're very busy staff wise uh, in everything from project and capital stuff planning and, and system planning to just keeping the parks uh, green and clean and, and programs going and uh, water in the swimming pool and <laughs> we're, 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 we're busy, be, busy bees. So uh, it's all going very well. Um, and we look forward to seeing all of you out uh, in the parks. Thanks. That's all I had. Thank you. Um, so that completes this week's monthly report. Uh, future dates are July agenda submission no later than uh, Wednesday, uh, June 21st. Finalize the agenda by June 26th. And our next DAC meeting is on Wednesday, July 12th. And is there any other further business? We are adjourned.